This video is for the nervous street photographer, those who find themselves stuck every time they set foot outside with their cameras. What are people thinking? What will this person say? These questions might run through your mind so much so that you might never end up raising the camera to your eye. And what are you left with? A pit in your stomach and no photos. It's no wonder why a lot of beginners stop doing street photography after a while. Because why would you want to go through that again? Honestly, even after doing street photography for many years, I still get anxious about it at times. It could be one of the best moments I've seen in a long time, and I'll hesitate and not take the photo because I was just too worried about, you know, what the potential outcome would have been if I, you know, took the photo. As painful as those instances are, you don't learn to get over that by not trying it again. You have to relive them again and again, and eventually there might come a time where it no longer bothers you. So if you're watching this video and expecting some quick fix to just immediately get rid of your nervousness when it comes to street photography, that's not the case. But that isn't to say that there aren't some things that you can do to help you get over this and you know, slowly become more confident doing street photography. So that's what I wanna share with you all in today's video. First, identify what's making you nervous in the first place. Before I get into any of my tips here, I think it really uh, makes sense to think about what exactly is making you nervous about street photography. It could be that you aren't really confident with how to use your camera, or maybe you're afraid of what people might be thinking of you walking around with a camera, or you're worried about what someone might say if you photograph them. Maybe it's all of those things. You might be surprised, but doing this simple exercise of thinking about what exactly is making you nervous about street photography could help you overcome it in the long term. Um, just so you're aware of you know, what's causing you to feel nervous. I personally think this is a useful thing to do when it comes to you know, overcoming your nerves. So after we've done that, let's get into the first tip. Don't bring a bag with you. So this might sound kind of weird. Why would I be suggesting you to not bring a camera bag? Um, but there's a reason behind this. Part of what makes a lot of people nervous when it comes to street photography is the perceived attention that's drawn to them because of the camera around their neck. You know, you're walking around likely by yourself with your camera and just that might be hard enough for a lot of people. And I know that to be true because I get approached by a lot of people online telling me how hard it is to, you know, walk around taking photos and they oftentimes just keep the camera in their bag and never take it out to take photos. If you're looking to get into street photography, you're not going to get very far if you're not comfortable in public with your camera. And you're obviously not going to be practicing and taking a lot of photos if your camera's in your bag. It'll be a little like getting thrown into the fire, but the next time you go out into the city, leave the camera bag behind. When you do that, you'll have nowhere to put your camera but around your neck or in your hands. And odds are, you're more likely to use it when it's in your hand. There really isn't anything to be embarrassed by taking your camera outside and using it. More people are doing photography now more than ever. And you know, if someone sees someone with a camera, that's just not an uncommon sight to see. So even though you might feel like you stick out like a sore thumb, it's not like people are seeing something they've never seen before. So there's nothing really weird about it. If anything, people might be looking at your camera and they're thinking what model camera it is because they want one too. Or they're trying to figure out what vintage like a film camera your X100V is. When it comes to street photography, your camera is practically useless if it's tucked away in your bag. So I encourage you to challenge yourself and leave the camera bag behind. It will feel like ripping a band-aid off and it might be terrifying at first, but you'll be surprised that for a lot of you, you'll quickly get over it. You can only do that through experience, so why bother putting a delay on it? Start somewhere low key. A lot of beginners think that they need to do street photography in the busiest part of town. That obviously isn't true. You can take great photos anywhere. So don't feel like you need to shoot in a really busy or crowded area. Heck, I don't really like shooting in those types of environments myself. 
So something I like to do is start off in a rather low key area, something like a public park, like where I'm at right now. And then I'll slowly work my way towards, you know, a busier part of the city. I find starting out in an area like this is a really good way to ease into the process. You can set up your camera for how you want to shoot. And you'll feel a lot more comfortable warming up and getting into the flow of doing street photography. A little change like this can really go a long way if you're finding yourself struggling every time you try to start doing street photography. So if a ton of people and large crowds makes you nervous, don't shoot in those types of environments. Start your day off shooting in a low-key, chill area, and then you can slowly build up the confidence to photograph a busier area if that's what you're trying to do. A lot of beginner street photographers think that to do street photography, you need to seek out interesting people on the street to photograph. But that's just one way of doing street photography. And I wouldn't necessarily recommend that way to people who are finding it to be really nerve wracking. Rather than looking for interesting people, look for interesting scenes. Pay attention more to your environment, the light, the shadows, how they form shapes against buildings. Look for pronounced colors or something unique about a particular area that might make for an interesting photograph. Hang around that area and visualize a subject within your frame. If you're patient enough, an interesting subject might walk by and that's your chance to combine an interesting scene and an interesting subject together to make your photo. Shooting this way takes out a lot of the anxiety of photographing people. And it sort of flips the role on your subject to approach you rather than you approaching your subject. You can set everything up on your camera, the settings, the composition. All you need to do is wait and be ready to hit the shutter when the subject walks into frame. I like to go about shooting street photography like this because I personally find myself more drawn to the environment and scenes that I come across more so than people. But that's not to say that my subjects or the people I'm photographing are not important to my street photography. Now with all that said, this might limit you in your creativity and how you shoot, but when you're just starting out, this can really help you navigate street photography and the nerves that come with it. Now, I don't often find myself having to explain myself to people when I'm out doing street photography, but ever so often, someone might ask me and approach me what I'm doing. I find that being upfront and honest when that happens is the best way to go about it. So what I like to do is show some of my work and explain that I am a street photographer. But rather than showing my Instagram page or my YouTube channel, I just like to show my website because it's a much nicer presentation of my favorite photos. I personally use Squarespace, who are today's sponsor, but I've been using them for close to five years now before I even started a YouTube channel. When it comes to presenting your photography online, a professional looking website can go a long way. You don't necessarily have to be a professional to have a professional looking website. Squarespace makes it so easy to start building a really cool website and they're continuing to make it even more customizable than before. So if I ever get approached by a stranger and they ask me what I'm doing, I'll quickly pop up a bookmarked page from my portfolio and show them some of my favorite photos. There's also a QR code so they can scan it and bring it up on their own phone. People are so much more understanding of what you do when you show your work like this. And knowing this and having it in my back pocket, literally, it takes off a lot of the anxiety of shooting street photography. So try Squarespace for yourself and build your own website. You can start a free trial and get 10% off your first purchase when you visit squarespace.com slash Faisal and use the code Faisal. Photograph what's actually interesting to you. So much of street photography is photographing people. And while I've talked a lot on this channel how it's not necessarily all about the people you photograph, this style of street photography is what draws a lot of people to the genre. But if you're simply walking around with your camera in the streets, taking photos of random people you see, it's gonna be hard to do street photography like that. And you probably will find yourself really nervous. And I say that because there isn't any real reason why you're photographing someone. If that person approached you and asked you why you took their photo, you wouldn't know what to say because you don't really know yourself why you took the photo. You'd be stuck. You'd be figuring out, you know, the quickest lie you can come up with. Being in that situation would make anyone nervous. I don't want to come off condescending when I say this, but don't photograph 
people for the sake of just photographing people. I speak from my own experience because I used to do street photography like that. I would run around with my camera and photograph anyone I saw with no real idea what I was doing or why I was doing it. Maybe I was just practicing and getting used to my camera, but it made street photography really nerve wracking for me. It's hard to do street photography like that. But if you challenge yourself to be less trigger happy and take the time to be, you know, more observant, you'll find moments that are a lot more interesting and worth photographing. And here's where it becomes helpful for those who find street photography nervous. If that person approached you and asked you what you were doing and why you photograph them, your reason is right there in front of you. There was an actual reason why you took the photograph and that's what you can say in response and explain to the person you photographed. You can be fully confident and honest with why you did take that photo because you know why you took the photo. Something, something about that scene or moment was interesting enough for you to hit the shutter. You won't have to feel like you have to be caught in some lie to explain yourself. So, you know, taking the time to really photograph things that are interesting to you will in turn make you more confident doing street photography. So I hope this tip helped those of you finding this genre of photography uh, a little bit difficult. Remember this, it's completely normal to be nervous doing street photography. I know people who've been doing it for years and way more than I have, and they still get nervous doing street photography. So it's completely normal if you're a beginner and you are feeling this, just know that every time you go out and do it again and again, that's progress and it's going to help you feel more confident in the long run. So I hope this motivates you guys or inspires you a little bit to head out there this week and make some photos for yourself. All right, that's all for me. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.